Well, hello everybody, it's uh, Richard here, and um, good to be back. Do you realise that it was June the 9th, the last time I did a video broadcast from the new workshop? And uh, that was um, the, uh, really this should be, I suppose, thinking about it, the Decca Salon number five. So um, so on the, on the 9th of June, which is over a month ago, as I said, I did part four, so this is part five. And I've had been doing loads of stuff since then. I've got lots to tell you today. But um, before I do, there's just a bit of following up to do with um, a chap called Don Dan Donaldson, who contacted me on part from part one of the Decker Cell on 73 and asked me about the gasket that I used for the sound box. And um, so this is the sound box that I repaired. And uh, Dan rightly asked, uh, you know, what size was the gasket and I got from the Netherlands. So I thought perhaps I'd share that with everybody. Um, I'm not going to take the sound box apart again, but I can show you exactly what it looks like. So I'm going to take Mr. GoPro off his perch and uh, so that we can, I can explain that a bit better. So, so, so here we go. Um, now the, the gasket itself is actually one continuous piece of tubing it's 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 a white tubing um, I'm not sure if it does come in different colors um, and uh, as you can see it's got a very it is hollow um, but I just I bought um, this particular I think it's a meter here from this company um, and in the Netherlands and they obviously can see that they obviously specialize in um, gramophone memorabilia and all the rest of it um, I found them on eBay actually that's where I got it from uh, probably could have there's probably others in the UK but um, it has worked extremely well and um, the bit so what you do basically is that you remove the four screw, retaining screws and then very carefully um, pull the this this particular uh, sound box has actually got a um, aluminium diaphragm pull it forward slightly slip this in the back and then put close it up and then put another layer laying it round making sure that you obviously you cut it to size and you can just about see there uh, where where it's running underneath the um, the spur there that brings the you know the uh, needle uh, screw into place there so and, and, and it works extremely well this was buzzing quite badly this particular one um, so I managed to fix that and it really sounds nice it's a nice it's a nice um, sound box you know so the rubber that rubber black rubber insert is actually um, with the with the steel piece in there helps grip it is slightly moving I might have to put a piece of insulation tape just to just to make sure that it's actually um, there's no air so it's airtight basically because that may affect the overall sound but it's looking really nice and I've cleaned up a few times so Dan that's what I did and it's available on eBay uh, and it only cost me well you know I forget how much it was but it wasn't very expensive and uh, just so that you know exactly what went on okay so I just thought I'd update everybody on that and I keep this uh, sound box in this rather nice box fun enough we've just uh, celebrated um, the centenary of Passchendaele and you see from this box I went over to um, the Menning Gate in Yeeps or wipers as the British troops used to call uh, several years ago and uh, um, funny enough I'm using this this particular uh, tin to put my sound boxes in um, this is on behalf this was on fundraising for the Royal British Legion but I'm also using as a prop the, the souvenir of, of uh, of Yeeps, the men in gates, some very nice shortbread I had when we went out there. Um, it, no, the video is not on its side, it's just that I'm using this as a stack that I put my GoPro on. So, um, but uh, I thought it was rather timely that uh, I should be talking about that. If anyone saw the BBC um, coverage of that, it was actually amazingly wonderful and I think they did a fantastic job, particularly the concert afterwards, after the main ceremony that went on during Sunday evening and um, or oh, Monday evening wasn't it yes I think it was Sunday evening or yeah, Sunday evening last Sunday which was amazing and uh, so yes and uh, uh, Russell Tovey was there and several other Alfie Bow, Helen Mirren did the commentary the link as she called it Dan Snow was there it really did it justice because that will be the that there won't be another one like that and I think that the the focus now will be definitely on to the um, 
Second World War and the veterans from that. So, and it was nice to see that 22 families were invited to go up and present um, their wreaths there. So yes, and uh, the horror of that war may never be repeated, but uh, it was nice to have that. Um, also, just in a similar vein, similar context, uh, last night um, at the proms, if anyone's been watching that, there was a, a nod to Ella Fitzgerald and also Daisy, Daisy Gillespie, which went on till about 11 o'clock. I really enjoyed watching that, you know, uh, and uh, singing. So it was really lovely. And uh, the BBC Concert Orchestra there was being was broadcasting amazing. Anyway, back to other things. Uh, uh, nebulous as it were. Um, just to let you know where we are with the gramophone, before I go on to other things, that's what this main video is about. Now, um, in shot, you'll see we've got the um, the main grille that covers the front of the gramophone where the, where the large double um, horn is situated, or the, um, the and um, and um, I've, um, because there was a slight, there's a, well, there's a mark here, and also it's degraded some of the fabric. I've actually um, sourced a new fabric for it. Um, and here we are. Now, this is reversible. This is proper speaker fabric. So it's made, it's, um, it's antique replacement speaker fabric. It's, you can use either side. So you can use the darker side or the lighter side. And um, so I probably will use the darker side as a comparison. Um, uh, just because I felt that I don't know it's that's been the other this one's been around 80 odd years and um, uh, you, your eyes drawn to that mark all the time and I thought it'd be better that we I start to you know start again I had trouble sourcing some of this in the UK this has come from the United States of America so thank you to my friends across the pond you supplied me with this it was quite expensive because, of course, we, I had to pay import duty and then, of course, uh, Royal Mail charged me another £9 for delivery, for handling, which I thought was extortionate, but there you go. I couldn't get out of it because I didn't know at the time. So it was quite expensive, but um, I will. The, the, the good news is that this will look really nice against the cabinet's colour. Uh, and also um, the fabric I take off here very carefully. I'm going to use again, I should probably use that on a smaller radio repair speaker for a spare speaker and uh, do it on that basis. So, um, but um, I've yet to take that off. This is one of the delicate jobs I'm, I'm saving. I just sit down in the house and um, do it on the table and take it off because it's tacked. Well, it's not tacked, it's stuck. Um, in a few places, it's stuck all the way around the outside, so I'll have to sort of just pry it off if I can, and then it's stuck occasionally here and here. So it's quite a delicate job there. You can see where it's where the paint is because of all that emulsion paint that was on this cabinet. Um, Seventy three had he had quite a hard he's had quite a hard life really, um, and I'll uh, I'll show you what I've been doing to bring him up to scratch. I've been working on the cabinet in my in the evenings. Uh, back from work when I haven't been London when I haven't been feeling too tired. Uh, if I just put this over the way here, uh, there we go. I don't want to drop that anywhere. So we'll we go. I'll get a stain on it. I don't know. Just hold it for a second. It's amazing when you try and do things one-handed. Nothing makes it work. Right there we go. Right okay, I'm with you now. So yes. So um, but uh, yes, yeah, so I'm look. I'm keeping that um, safe really that piece, keeping it safe. You'll notice that the garage is much clearer from the last time I spoke to you all, and that's due to the kitchen, bathroom, and cloakroom now being completed. So I've got a really nice, clean, white uh, environment to, um, you know, to do whatever you do when you go in the bathroom. And, uh, you know, so the bath is all Victorian style, which is really nice. And I have to say that Sam Jones did a fantastic job. So. Um, I recommend Sam to anybody. Um, I feel I shouldn't recommend it to too many people because uh, I won't get him back. But he's coming back to do some other work uh, outside the house and do all the new guttering, painting, and then the next year I'm going to have a new drive and way put in, so that'd be quite good. Anyway, the gramophone itself is on its side. Uh, this is the main horn, uh, and it's a tr uh, trombone-style horn, and um, 
So I've been working on the front side, these bits here. You probably can't see very clear actually, but they, they've come up really well. So I've been staining this using a gloss mahogany dark stain because it was, the front was quite badly scarred, battle scars, because as I say, he had quite a hard life. And especially the front up bit there, that was quite marked and it catches your eye when looking at it. The sides, now, um, like um, the 118 here, which had been in a skip, poor thing, um, and had an electric arm fitted to it. I don't like altering too much of the patina, really. I think it should remain original. So I did I did actually do quite a bit of work on this. This is needing more sort of varnishing and polishing and that. So what I've done is, on here, I've just done, I've just literally stained, restained this part. This is the side. And then given it a heavy polish. And I'm gonna leave that. I think it should be all right. You can see here where there's, it's been roped together and this is quite a soft wood and then it's been you know you can see where some rope was cut into the actual woodwork. I'm probably going to leave that because this is behind and the back are the same. I'll probably give that another polish. The edge, the edging, this is where the main hinge goes. Um, I'll, um, I've been giving that a few coats of varnish and I think that looks all right now. Um, the that that grill slides down this slot here and then you put the, the pop, top back on again. And the plinth, as I call it, the motor plinth, I've now given that several coats of varnish and you can see, I'm gonna leave that now. I think that I don't, that is 100% better than it was when it arrived. Um, I had to re-drill the holes out again because the motor board wasn't, wasn't straight so I've done that. The motor board is here with the motor on it, so that's all ready to go. Um, just need to put that on. So it's um, it's coming along basically. So, but and then I mean things like the feet. I had to re I had to completely revarnish, rub those down, re They were really badly kicked about. I mean this poor thing had been, you know. So it's never going to be as as it was when it left the factory. But it is. It is 80 years old, so come on, you know. And furniture, I think, some of the knocks and battle scars that furniture has actually gives it some form of life in some respect. Um, the main thing is it sounds really lovely, and um, when I tested it out, and I've seen worse. I've seen one on eBay recently that went for over, I think it was uh, 157 pounds or something and it was a 70s this is a 73 so it's in the same era 19 early 1930s these were made so um but it's not the money i mean i'm not going to sell it it's going to be in the office and i'm going to play lots of my gramophone records on it and uh, just enjoy it really i've then got the doors to do which um i mean two minds really whether to leave the doors off or whether to fix them on uh, but I'll decide. I've got some hinges. For, I've got some new hinges for those, so they need cleaning. And then the lid, the lid needs doing as well, where all the extra bits are in there um, that I talked about last time. So yes, it's coming. It's coming along. Um, the other, does someone parish notices really? The other thing is that I was watching one of my new channels, subscribers to channels, a chap called Technomoan. And uh, I don't know if you've seen him, but he's, he reviews uh, audio equipment and technical equipment and old formats in quite a lot. He's really got a very interesting channel and um, uh, I really quite enjoy watching his stuff. And he had showcased this MaxTech radio cassette player, which the, the makers call a boombox. I don't quite, wouldn't quite go that far. Um, and uh, he got it from Aldi as well, and it was something like 28 quid or something. And I, I was just intrigued by this, and uh, so I've got an Aldi that's just open near me. Um, so I one day I was passing and I just turned in and went and had a look. I must say they've got some strange things in there, a mixture of food and other bits that are on cheap offer, uh, some I wouldn't touch. But they had this, and they had those cheap record players, those Crosley things that are a real waste of waste of time and and turn up in places like H, uh, HMV some of them you know anyway won't go there um, so I thought I'd share that with you and it came you won't believe this it came with a three-year guarantee and the lady on the checkout the girl on the checkout said oh she said you must keep the receipt sir she said because it's a three-year guarantee I said oh yes I must remember that excuse me I just have a drink of tea 
so um, when I got it home I wasn't expecting really very much I mean from his blog um, it's you know through the through the speakers in the in the lounge it sounded quite good but I thought well, it, they're quite small these as you can see um, it has actually got some quite nice features I have to say it's got what it calls bass which is really tone um, it's um, it does actually have a slot for a SD card and uh, a, a, a USB so uh, so and it's you know so it actually shows on there with a little light when the when it's playing as well I haven't tried that feature there's a obviously there's a back and a forward and play for the SD card um, the radio is an F is FM it's not um, uh, it's actually got Bluetooth as well so you can link it with your Bluetooth device um, and uh, I haven't tried that either um, but um, the cassette player is quite nice it must be AC biased I think because it's it's quite nice I haven't recorded with it but I certainly um, I think actually there's a microphone out on here which is even better so you don't get that pickup of sound but um, and it takes if you want to use it on batteries it takes four D bat D cell batteries as well um, I normally use this when I'm in the garden the JVC this JVC I bought from Dixon's many many years ago back in the 80s and um, and it works really well. Um, it stopped working on it on long wave and medium wave, but I think it's a connection that I don't list, tend to listen to that. On FM, it works perfectly all right. And it's um, you know, it's I had it as my main when I was younger as a main source. And when I was especially when I was moving around to various um, courses I was doing, um, clinical courses I was doing within the health service when I was working for them then and doing some. And when I took, went down to Margate, the raw sea bathing as it was. I um, I used it there, and it did its good service. It's got a nice tone to it. But anyway, getting back to the Max Tech, um, let me just play this for you. I'll just put the radio on. This is classic FM. I wouldn't say it was hi-fi. I mean, it's even got it's even got short wave two, short wave one, and medium wave. I've not even tried those. I don't even pick up very much. That's classic FM. Um, the cassette deck. Let me just put just tape, and then play. That's where we play. It actually plays.